Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to take a look at an idea I came up with to randomly apply images from a folder onto duplicated objects like this. Let's jump right into it. Let's say I have a folder of images like this, representing a bunch of flashcards. I want to be able to apply these randomly to separate objects in my scene that are duplicates of each other, but I don't want to combine them into one giant file or a single UV map. We can do this with a feature of the texturing system called UDIMs. Let's take a look at how they work. This is a traditional UV map. This bottom corner has the coordinates of 0, 0. In this direction, the X values increase until we get to this corner where the value is 1. And so we have a value of 1, 0. In this direction, the Y values increase until we get to this corner where we have a value of 0 for our x and 1 for our y. In this corner, we have a value of 1 for our x and 1 for our y. When we make a UV map, we're taking a face of our mesh and giving each corner of that face a coordinate on this graph. So if I take this front face and make it big like this, whatever is in the 0, 0 corner is going to get mapped here. 0, 1 here. 1, 1 here, and 1, 0 here. If we have values that are greater than 1 or less than 0 in any direction, Blender relies on this extension value. If this is set to repeat, the values simply wrap around. If we go past 1, it goes back to 0. If we choose extend, if we go past 1, whatever the last value was will continue to be that value. And then clip simply removes any values past 1 or before zero in either direction. With standard UV editing, our textures can only reference one image at a time. So if I open a file, I can map any part of this image to each face. If I wanted to map multiple images, I would have to have several image texture nodes, each referencing a different file. This is where UDIMs can help us out. Going back to my folder, I've gone ahead and renamed all of my files. I gave them a prefix of cards underscore and then started numbering them starting at 1001. This number is really important as this is the bottom left hand corner of our UDIM grid. So my alphabet cards go from cards underscore 1001 to cards underscore 1026. So here I'm gonna say open and select all of the newly renamed files and say open image. Because of my naming convention, Blender has realized that I'm dealing with a group of files that I want to use as UDIM tiles. So the name of this file is now cards underscore udim.png. Let's take a look at how the UDIM grid is laid out. Starting in this bottom corner, we have our 1001 tile, and then we continue on to the right until we get to file 1010. At this point, we jump back to the beginning and go up to the next row and have another 10 images, which finally it goes back, jumps up to the next row and finishes out. UDIMs are used in many graphics applications these days, and the standard is to have 10 tiles across. And then after 10 tiles, they start to stack. If I'm not mistaken, UDIMs have a limit of 9,999 tiles. So you've got plenty of room. Another interesting point is that UDIM tiles don't have to be the same size or the same aspect ratio as one another. Each tile acts as its own virtual UV space. So as before, this first tile, tile number 1001, remains at the original UV coordinates. Tile number 2 goes from 10 to 20. and the Y direction works in the same way. So now we can place our tiles anywhere in this area and get the tile that we want. So if we add a texture to this cube and use our UDIM texture and the UV coordinates, we see now that we can take these out faces and move them wherever we want them. Here I've added a new plane that's the aspect ratio of the cards that I want to use. And now I've assigned it the UDIM texture that I just had. I can use my mapping node 
to adjust my UV coordinates. So if I move along the X axis, I move along that first row. And you'll notice to go outside of my range, Blender acts like there's a missing texture. So we don't want to go out of bounds. So let's think about how we could assign a random tile from our UDIMs to each object. I'll duplicate this a couple of times. And we want to adjust our location. So we'll add a combined XYZ node. If we change the X, we move along the current row. And if we change the Y, we change the row that we're on. So first, let's pick something from our first row. We want a random value for each object. So we'll use an input object info node because this node has a random value that gets generated for each object that has this material. You'll see that I see part of the first and second tiles. That's because the random value generates values from zero to one. Since we have 26 images, we want this value instead of going from zero to one to go from zero to 25. So we have 26 distinct values. So let's multiply this number by 26. If we add a math node and set it to multiply, we will now have values from zero to 26. Now we don't want fractional values, so we'll want to round these off. We can use another math node and we'll set it to floor. Since the UV coordinates start at zero, zero is going to be our first option and we won't actually want anything starting at 26. However, we will want to come right up to 26 in our values. So I'm simply going to add a subtract node here and subtract a value like 0 0.001. So now I get 25.999, which will be rounded down to 25. But in this field, I can enter in the number of images that I have in my folder. Because we're just working with the X component here, and we know that the UDIM tile rows have a maximum of 10 tiles, we want to do a modulo of 10 here. That means no matter what number we get, it's always going to be 0 through 9. But of course, if we get greater than 10, like say 13, we're not going to get the 13th item. It'll just wrap back around to 3. That's okay. We just need to move up to the next row. To do that, if we simply divide our round off number by 10, so let's say the value was 11, we'd get a value of 1.1. If we then floor this value, that reduces down to a value of one, which is going to be the second row. And we can plug that into our Y value. So now if I take these and duplicate them, I'll get random values for each. Let's take this a couple of steps further. In addition to changing the image, I could also give them random tints. If I were to add a color mix node and connect in my random value to it, you'll see that our tiles have been tinted in grayscale. I could add a converter color ramp node and choose some colors. I could also change my operation to see if there's another one that I like the results better. I'm gonna go with color. Now that this works, let's take the final step of doing a nice random distribution of these tiles. I'm gonna delete all but one of them. I'll add a plane and add a new geometry node tree to it. I'll add a point, distribute points on faces node and recombine it with the original plane. I'll use the points to do an instance on points. I'll drag my card object down into my node tree and plug it into the instance. I'll add a translate instances node just to bring them up a hair. And I'm gonna plug in a random value into my translation. I'll change this to vector node, plug it into the translation and go from 0 0.001 to 0 0.01. I'll duplicate this random value node and plug it into the rotation and go from negative pi to pi. 
because there aren't any collision detections here, some of these might overlap each other. So you may have to play with this translation a little bit to get the results you want. One last thing I'll do is go back to my shader and adjust the alpha to get rid of these black corners. I'll simply take the alpha from the image and plug it into the alpha of my shader. And there it is. The beauty of this process is if that I created a new image and placed it in my UDIM folder and named it the next number in the sequence, I would simply reload the textures in this node and change this value to 27, and then that new image would be integrated in with the rest of them. So I hope this gives you some ideas of some ways you could use UDIMs in this manner. You should really try it out. As always, I hope this inspires you to make something awesome. And if you do, tag me on Twitter and let me see. Anyway, until next time, I'll catch you later.